Hi. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hello from Mumbai, India. Hello. We are hanging out and catching some community cats. My name is Pallavi Kamo. I'm the development manager of the Feline Foundation. And we are an NGO that helps stray animals, mostly cats, in Mumbai. So on a day-to-day -day basis, we uh, sterilize cats, or we call it animal birth control here in India, or spay neuter abroad. There's millions of dogs and cats living on the streets in Mumbai. The actual number is probably unknown, but millions is a very good estimate. So we got two cats up on the wall here. And then we got a bunch of cats down here. We got dogs. We got more dogs. We got more cats. Mumbai as a city has grown so much and with that so have our street animals. Sterilization is the most long term and effective way of managing the population to maybe a sustainable level. So today we're going to be going to Varsova Gaon or Varsova village in English. Um, which is a small, very dense residential area where we estimate that there are a thousand cats. So we, you know, decided to target this area to do a mass DNR drive just so we could measure our own impact on the population. We have sterilized about half the cats by our estimates and today we're going to be going in and picking up more cats for DNR um, and we're going to take a look at how the cats live and how we catch them and what the next steps are. We do not have traps. Traps are not easily available in India, but um, at least in Varsova Gaon, the cats there are generally very hungry and very excited for food. So it makes it a little bit easier to catch them. Also because they're, like I said, fed by people. So some of them are quite friendly. So we're going to be catching them by hand and putting them inside cat carriers and just doing it the manual way. <laughs> Wow. This is faster than traffic. So when we bring in cats for surgery, while they're under anesthesia, we make a small V-shaped cut in the ear. And this is to um, denote that this cat has been sterilized. So that way you know how many cats at any given point in one area have been sterilized. Um, it helps you keep track of your progress. It also helps you keep track of if any new animals have entered the area that are left to do. And it just ensures that your cats aren't going to be picked up by another person also trying to do the same thing. Um, and it avoids animals going under unnecessary stress of being caught again and even undergoing under anesthesia again. Ear notching is just a wonderful global practice that makes life very easy for us because we know exactly how many cats that are left to do um, in our area. So today we're looking for cats with no ear notches. Yep. Hi! <laughs> nice ear notch! <laughs> you guys are already done. Yeah. You guys have ear tips. Ear tip, ear tip, ear tip. Yeah. Ear tip. Ear tip. Oh, not you. That one doesn't have an ear tip. Oh. Here we go. Wow, that was instant. Spaying and neutering. It's, it's not just for population control, yes it does stabilize populations, we've actually seen it affect the average lifespan of the animals in a population, um, but it even has an effect on the individual animal. We see cats get into fewer cat fights, 
Um, a lot of the cats here um, become moms way too early and they really can't handle the stress of pregnancy and giving birth and so we've seen the impacts of spay and neuter on individual animals as well. In fact, we advise pet owners to get their pets spayed not just for the sake of hey your cat might have babies one day but also just like do not at any cost let your cat have babies because it will be bad for her. Even though Mumbai does have a lot of people, I don't think there are enough adoptive homes for all the animals out there. And a lot of them just do okay on the roads as long as the area is safe and they have people looking out for them. So it's much more realistic to get the population to a sustainable level and then maybe the ones, the people who then want to adopt those animals will just find a way to fill up their homes. There's always enough animals out there to adopt. So those who really want to adopt will. Um, and we just have to make sure that all the rest are also taken care of by coming together as a community and looking out for them in ways other than adoption. It is, an, it is adoption in a way. You're just doing it on the streets instead of in your home. Community care does not mean that there's one person in charge of feeding all 50 dogs, you know, in her gully or in her lane. It takes a community to take care of our community animals. It's really impossible to do it alone and the burden of care should not fall on just the government or just NGOs or just, you know, animal feeders, which is the way it is now. Um, everybody has to come together and only with all of these different stakeholders like interacting together and intersecting in that way can we actually achieve a goal and it is definitely achieve achievable because I myself have witnessed the impact of community care and mass DNR programs on street animal populations. I have huge hopes for the situation in Mumbai. I think the way Mumbai people have responded to animal NGOs has been great. Um, I hope for a healthy and sustainable population of street cats living in harmony with its people. That's, that's our vision the vision of the Feline Foundation. Um, we didn't want to be unrealistic and say maybe we won't see street cats anymore. And I think street cats are fine to see, I think they're nice. Um, but we can get to a place where everybody's living in harmony and we, everybody knows what to do. Um, there'll be a point where every person knows who to call if a cat is injured or know where to take that cat or know where to get a cat sterilized. I hope that one day there will be that many resources available in the city and that we will be at the forefront of it. Um, that's my vision for Mumbai.